Hi, this is Steve at blessedhopeforever.com. We've been studying together in 2 Corinthians verse by verse uh, on Sundays. And uh, of course, if you follow this channel, you know we kind of postponed that last week uh, to uh, talk about something that I thought was a little relevant to the particular time that we're uh, living, uh, the events that we're seeing unfold. Uh, concerning uh, what might be Psalm 83. And so I talked about this 120 year pattern that seems to be contained within a 120 Jubilee uh, cycle. And uh, I wanna touch on that just a little bit more at the end of this video. Uh, I wanna bring something else in alongside that that I find a little bit interesting. Uh, you, maybe you will, maybe you won't. But in this video tonight, uh, this is this Wednesday night, we're going to uh, discuss uh, uh, Ezekiel 38. Uh, we spent some time talking about Psalm 83. Uh, so I wanted to just touch base on, on, on Ezekiel 38 a little bit, just to kind of put that in perspective as it relates to what we're seeing, seeing going on uh, today. Uh, most uh, Bible uh, students are aware of the fact that Psalm 83 probably occurs before Ezekiel 38. Uh, as, uh, Psalm 83 being uh, the border nations which attack Israel, which uh, cause Israel's territory to expand, or that she feels at, at, at peace uh, without any threat. Uh, and it's then that destruction comes suddenly. That's Ezekiel 38. That's the outer ring, uh, uh, certain nations that are involved in that. And that's what I want to discuss. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And I'll try to uh, kind of help us out as we go along by uh, putting some things up here on the screen to help clarify uh, that narrative. So what nations really are going to be involved in the military attack against Israel predicted in Ezekiel 38? Well, in Ezekiel 38, God foretold that in the latter days there would be a major military attack against the little tiny state of Israel in the homeland that once Israel would be restored and God indicated that military attack would be comprised of the armies of nations as they were known back in Ezekiel's day. Five of those nations are named by God in Ezekiel chapter 38, uh, verses 5 and 6. So we're going to quickly look at that. Now in verse 5, the first nation was Persia. Now that's what it was known as in Ezekiel's day, but modern day Persia is the nation of Iran. Uh, we're already seeing Iran in the news. Some 2,500 years ago through this prophecy, God was saying that in the end times, Iran would be sending military forces against Israel in the Middle East. Muslim forces overthrew the Shah of Iran. Uh, I watched that in a state of uh, ignorant bliss. And they've been dominating the nation of Iran ever since. That radical Muslim government of Iran has publicly declared more than once that its ultimate goal is the annihilation of Israel from the Middle East. The second nation uh, named in verse 5 is Ethiopia. Now, that again is, is, is what that nation was known as in Ezekiel's day, but I must point out that the nation known as Ethiopia back in Ezekiel's day is not the same nation that we know as Ethiopia today. The nation known as Ethiopia in Ezekiel's day is the nation that we know today as the Sudan. Sudan. Sudan right now again is dominated and ruled by a radical Muslim government that hates Israel with a passion and wants to see it destroyed. The third nation named in verse 5 is Libya. Libya is located due west of Egypt in North Africa, and you know what's been going on in Libya in recent years since the overthrow of uh, Gaddafi, Muammar Gaddafi. 
Gaddafi was very anti-West, uh, very anti-American, but even more strongly, he was anti-Israel. He would have loved to see Israel wiped off the map. The fourth nation named in verse 6 was Gomer. Now, uh, that has nothing to do with Andy Griffith. Uh, in Ezekiel's day, Gomer was a tribal group of people who were located in the central part of what you and I know today as the nation of Turkey. The fifth nation named, verse 6, was the house of Tagarma of the North Quarters. Now, in Ezekiel's day, Tagarma was another tribal group of people who were located in the eastern part of what you and I know today as the nation of Turkey. Now, you're probably aware of the fact, maybe you are or maybe you're not, that since the end of World War II, that, that Turkey, although it's a Muslim nation, basically Turkey has had a secular government that's allied itself with the Western nations of the world, including the United States. Turkey, since the end of World War II, has been a member of NATO. It's been a, an important U.S. security partner, and, and it's been a valued NATO ally since 1952. But we have seen that radically changing. Not too long ago, uh, a radical Muslim party in Turkey won by election control of the government of the capital city of the nation of Turkey. And when they won that election, they publicly stated that it, I, it, is, it was their goal to gain control of the national government of Turkey. And one of the spokesmen for that uh, radical Muslim party said that when we do that, we're going to change our relationship with NATO. We're going to establish an Islamic NATO and an Islamic common market. I've done a lot of videos. Well, not a lot, but I've done several videos on Turkey. You'll find those in our playlist. Turkey is meant to come under complete domination by a radical Muslim element where it will also turn against the nation of Israel and want to see it annihilated from the face of planet Earth. It is uh, very interesting to note that every one of these nations named here in Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 5 and 6 today are Islamic nations. Every one. Therefore, God some 2,500 years ago through this prophecy was indicating that in the end times, Israel will have very serious problems with the Islamic nations of the world. Dearly beloved, prophecy is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. Now, there is a sixth nation named here in Ezekiel 38. But I'm going to say, and it's not popular, but I'm going to say Russia is not Rosh. Rosh is a Hebrew word for head, uh, beginning. Uh, the word is frequently used in the Hebrew Bible uh, 599 times. And it does not in any way whatsoever imply Russia. Nine times out of ten, the name Gog is mentioned in Ezekiel 38 and 39, making it highly symbolic in the context. King David was referring to Meshach in his time. We know that from Psalm 120. Interesting number for a chapter. As a place of war... Two millennia before Moscow was first mentioned in A.D. 1147, and Tubal is frequently mentioned together with Javan, that's Greece, as a real geographic place far from the Siberian region where uh, Tobolsk is located. Gog and Magog, folks, in my opinion, are not, it's not a literal location, nor is it an allusion to some person or a nation but it is a figurative phrase. The expression Gog and Magog is an idiomatic phrase with a figurative meaning of all heathen nations, all Gentiles, all pagans, all of those outside of God's election and will. 
The world outside of Israel was Gog and Magog. For example, Jews in the second century BC in Egypt interpreted Gog and Magog as Ethiopians and Nubians who accompanied Antiochus uh, when he captured Jerusalem. The book of uh, Revelation alludes to this Ezekiel prophecy in chapter 20, verse 8, when after the millennium, Satan calls Gog and Magog, uh, that's all wicked resurrected, resurrected nations, to the final battle against the beloved city, heavenly Jerusalem. Now, when the thousand years are complete, Satan will be released from his prison. This, we know this. And he'll go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to assemble them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the seashore. That's what we read. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. It's, if you, now, if you're of a different mind and you want to look at Russia you know, as Gog and Magog, I don't have any problem with that. But uh, I can't do that. Uh, I've done a number of videos on Turkey. I believe if you, if you just be honest with the text, and if, you, if you're honest with the map, you're going to see that this is Turkey. And uh, Turkey has, without a doubt, uh, may, he's, it, Turkey is a major player in, in all of these events. Turkey, the head of, t of Turkey right now, uh, Prime Minister Erdogan, uh, his aspirations are to become the head of this new Islamic caliphate, this deadly wound that is healed that we read about in Revelation. I've done a number of videos. It's all ties together. The Mark of the Beast, uh, or, you know, with... Uh, I, I don't want to harp on this too much, but, you know, radical Islam folks, listen to me. I, I, I tried to tell people years ago how that Islam plays a significant role in all of this. Uh, not the, the Vatican, not the Pope, not Barack Obama, not Henry Kissinger, not America, not, you know, Islam, Christianity's counterfeit. So now I want to share just a little bit of something with you that I think maybe you might find it interesting. I know I do. I asked my thoughts, a few of my followers what they thought of this, and they, uh, because they didn't think I was crazy, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this up here on the screen uh, for you to look at, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Now this probably won't make a whole lot of sense to you, if you didn't watch our video prior to this one uh, that was published Sunday on the what I believe is a 120-year segment of time that is we see contained within the overall 120 jubilees, 6,000 years. Now, we know that the 120 jubilees, uh, uh, 2,000, that's separated into three parts, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, equaling 6,000, whereas the 120 years is separated into three parts. That would be 40 years, 40 years, and 40 years. Three sets of 40. All right. Now, I think that what we're looking at when we look at this is, is since we're looking at at this 6,000 year, 120 jubilees going from Adam to Noah, from Noah to Christ, and from Christ to, you could say the Revelation 12 sign, that's what I have said, you don't have to agree with that. I'm, I, I came out and maybe perhaps stupidly suggested that the 6,000 years is up, that it ended at the Revelation 12 sign. That may be true, that may not be true. Uh, I'm not asking you to believe either way. Uh, you can look at uh, this, uh, the end of this third 2,000 years from Christ to whenever. You could look at that however you want. But uh, it's, this, it's interesting to me, and I sat up last night looking at this, and I thought, well, okay, if, if we've got 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, 
on the, on the Jubilee side. When we look at the year's side, we've got 40, 40, and 40. So what happened you know, uh, during these years of 1897, 1937, and 1977? Now, it may not be exactly accurate right to the year, but, but that puts us in a time frame that I think is very interesting, uh, which I tried to show here below it. So what we're looking at is uh, Adam created, okay, to Noah, that's the flood. So this is why I said to suffer judgment and then to Christ, the Prince of Peace, and then the Revelation 12 sign to deliverance, to our being delivered, Israel, us being delivered, all right? What's interesting about this is if you look at the 40, 40, 40 side of it, of the 120 years, where it breaks down to 1897, 1937, and 1977, we appear to be looking at something almost the same. Uh, we're looking at uh, 1897, the first Zionist Congress. This was the beginning of the movement to restore Israel as a nation. You could call that created. And then to 1937, that puts us in the general uh, period uh, of World War II, prior, just prior to World War II. Uh, Hitler invaded Poland in 1939, I believe. Uh, the, the Holocaust took place uh, between there then and 1945. So we're looking at uh, suffering judgment Holocaust associated with that as well. And then we go to 1977, which is famous. The, the year is famous. It's known for the Camp David Accords. This is, you know, Menachem Begin, uh, Anwar Sadat, you know, the whole purpose uh, to work out some kind of deal to trade land for peace. And so I'm looking at this as the land for peace, trading land for peace. And then deliverance. So if you look at this, it, it's kind of interesting. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, build a whole lot on it, but I do find it interesting. I just want you all to know that I love you tremendously. I think about you constantly. Every one of you, you know who you are. Uh, there's never a day goes by that you're not on my mind. I pray for you constantly. I ask for your prayers for the direction of this ministry. Until next time, rest in Him. Let not your heart be troubled. Thanks for watching.